daddy, brothers, sisters. Uh, I'm just going to start reading uh, Acts 13, 43. Acts 13, 43. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Acts 26, 5 Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most strict sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Galatians 1, 13-14 for you have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. James 1, 26 to 27. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion vain, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit, that means to care for, the fatherless, to care for, the widows, in their affliction, to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, if you ain't figured it out yet, the key word in all of those readings is religion and religious. Because it really never fails, you can get on social media and just browse through, uh, especially a bunch of these YouTuber sites, and somebody is eventually going to bash the word religion. They're going to say it's not of God, it's a man-made thing, and we shouldn't have anything to do with religion because it's all about relationships. Those people that say such things have a form of religion. Yeah, they're not religious in the manner they ought to be. They seem to be religious, but they're not. Why? Well, basically because they speak totally against the Word of God. Because pure religion and undefiled before God, the Father, is this. So, is there a religion? Yes, it is. And that religion is this, to care for the fatherless, to care for the widows, and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. That is pure religion. Can't get no simpler than that. To care for the fatherless. And you know, brother and sister, there's children that's got both a mama and a papa in their house that are actually fatherless. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying there. Now, as it comes to the witness, if you'll look in Scripture, I'm not going to help you on that one. you got to go search it out on your own. God even tells us what a widow is. A widow, in our eyes, in the world's eyes, is one whose husband has departed from them. And according to God, that don't make them a widow. 
A widow is a woman whose husband has left. That could be in death or divorce. And is desolate. That means being there in afflictions because they don't have a job and have kids to take care of, etc., etc., all kind of uh, reasons. And, and, and as the uh, church, we are to help them, care for them in those afflictions. Now, to keep yourself unspotted from the world. See, this is what a lot of people don't want to hear. Because they say, well, religions is a bunch of do's and don'ts. Brothers and sisters, I got news for you. The whole testament is about a bunch of do's and don'ts. If you believe that God is not about do's and don'ts, then you don't know God's word. It's that simple. It's that simple. I can go to First Thessalonians, the very first letter that Paul scripts. And at the very end there, it tells you a bunch of don'ts. Don't quench the spirit. Don't do this. Don't do this. And it's got a bunch of do's. Pray without ceasing. And it's got a bunch of do's. So, yes, brothers and sisters, we are about do's and don'ts. And we are to be found before God undefiled and in pure religion. Now, religion. The best definement that I could find on religion is, is this. The term calls attention to the all-important fact that man is a religious being. There is that in his nature that prompts him to some sort of faith and worship. If you say, I am not religious, you are in a sort of religion. Religiously, I like this one a whole lot better. Religiously, relating to or manifesting faithful devotion. Yeah. A lot of people do a lot of things religiously. And in such, they are in some form of religion. They are religious to a point. Uh, fervent. Zealous. That's religiously. Now, this is what I found interesting. And I don't know what these words mean. I'm just going to say them. Uh, I, I don't I don't study these type of words because really I, I'm gonna tell you honestly it don't mean I don't need to know the meaning of these one two three words I don't need to know the meaning of them because I believe in God and I believe in religion if a person believes in God but not in religion that person could be, didn't say is, it said could be a deist or a theist, whatever that means, but not an agnostic. I don't know what that means either. And really, brother, sister, please don't comment and tell me. If I wanted to know what it was, I'd go and just Google it. I just don't care, okay? Because I'm not a person that believes in God, but not in religion. So I know I'm not them, whatever they are. Um, saints, and I use the term Christians for some of y'all, because I know y'all like that word still, believe in both God and religion. So, ooh, wait a minute. The Bible says there's religion. So if you're professing to know God, but you don't believe in religion, Brothers and sisters, you and between what they call a rock and a hard spot. Now, this is my next point, and I'll close. 
every time I see one bash religion, I respond to them with scripture. And it's usually James 1, 26 to 27. Because, yes, folks, there are a bunch of people out there that seem to be religious in that they don't believe in religion. So, what do we do? I know this. The day I stand, on that merciful day, I pray, I, I've given out mercy, I pray, and I, 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 God says, if I, if I judge with mercy and I act with mercy, I'll receive mercy in my judgment. I pray to be found in religion. I pray to be found unspotted from the things in this world. You know, Paul speaks. I'm gonna look up one. I'm gonna look up one one scripture that I should have looked up earlier, but I didn't. Because unspotted just hit my heart. Okay. They are spots. Jude 1, oh, Jude 1, ain't, but just, it ain't Jude 1, Jude 12, King James, These are spots on your love feast. Love feast, agape. The assembly will be observed the Lord's Last Supper, which is supposed to be not once ever, whenever. Blue moon is supposed to be more times than we're doing it. These are spots in your love feast. While they feast with you, Without fear, serving themselves, they are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, laid out on trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots. Remember, we spoke about taking heart in the Lord's Supper, the agape unworthily where it brings damnation upon ourselves if we do so. So, this is it. There is religion. Pure, unpure, undefiled, defiled. There are those that seem to be religious and there are those that are indeed religious. There are the do's and the don'ts that we are to be in striving to live as religiously. And there are some don'ts that we should strive to be not doing religiously. So, and you can argue till the cows come home about religion. But if you're a person that's called a saint and believes in God but doesn't believe in religion, you got your wires crossed somewhere. And i tell you where. It's because you have listened to man once again. And you have not listened to God and his word. So how?
how do you think you're going to be found on that day? Spotted? Not spotted. Hey, love y'all. Praying for you, and I'll see you next time.